In this quick video, we're gonna do a teardown on an unusual electronic device. So unusual that I've only seen one of these before and I happen to have one. It's called an Encino. It's a portable CD player, like a disc bin type, but it plays MP3s and it also records. You'll wanna watch this one, it's pretty unusual. I thought I did a, a um a video on this thing in the past but apparently not I just I had it I've had this thing for years and I brought it down here to do a video on it and I guess I never got around to doing it this is an Encino e -N -C -I -N -O, Encino it's a portable CD player but as you can see here it says mp3 jukebox mp3 CD player that's right, it plays CDs that are recorded in MP3, which means you can have hundreds of tracks on one disc. And of course, this was around long before the, uh, the, the MP3 uh, players that showed up that used uh, internal memory. This is very old. I'm trying to remember where I found this, when I found it. Uh, I've had it for years. Um, I don't even know if I've got the power supply for it. It's an oddball. It uses a DC 5 volt power supply. I'm sure I've got the power supply somewhere. Uh, it even has a recording function. Player recorder. And uh, we can try that out. It runs off of a couple of AA batteries and uh, of course a 5 volt power supply which I don't think I have the power supply for it. Or if I do, I don't know where it is. As I say, this was uh, this is something I've had for a very long time. The, the model of this is called a Voyager. If anybody knows, um, I don't even know where I found this. Um, I, I really, I, I, it could have been at like a flea market or something. Uh, I just happened to see this. I happened to spot this thing, and I thought that is kind of neat. And I bought it, and it works. It actually works. And this unit here should be fully functional. We should be able to plug this thing in and uh, play some music off of a, a an MP3 uh, disc. And I I, th I think it might even read. Could be wrong, but I think this will read CDRW as well as CDR. I'm sure that the the board on this thing is made by Sony. Let's uh, try this out. Let's. Uh, see how it works first of all and then I'll I'm gonna take this thing apart and show you guys what's inside this thing and uh, yeah we'll just do a little show and tell of this rather unique piece of hardware that uh, I've never seen it since I've, I've this is the only one that I've ever seen and as I say I I really don't remember where I got this but I have a feeling that there may have been a uh, there may have been a something that attaches on here like a clip there may have been like a, a car adapter or something to slide it in on the dash or clip it to the dash. Uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's been so long, but I, I have a feeling I got this at like a flea market or something um, many years ago. So if anybody knows anything about it, I don't think I paid very much for it either. I think I paid like twenty or thirty dollars for it. It was cheap, but anyway, it's kind of a neat unit. And I've had it for many years. Let's uh, load some batteries in this thing. Just so happens that I've got some batteries here. I should have some rechargeable batteries around here too. I think it'll work off rechargeables, but I've got some just regular AA batteries that we can plug into it. And uh, I've got a adapter so that I can put this onto my, my sound system. Still figuring out this new uh, amplifier that I've got here which inputs which I think this is tape tape one so we can plug it into the line output on the back here and we'll load up an mp3 disc there just happens to be that there is an mp3 disc that was in it and Is there a switch on this thing that I have to turn on? Or do I just, pre I forget how to work it. I can just press the play button. There we go. What's the use? You can see the disc spinning. It tells me it's an ISO 9660, uh, uh, whatever it was. This disc was recorded a few years ago. This is a more recent disc though. It's not a, uh, it's 
not a real old one. Uh, why isn't it playing? It apparently has a problem. Either that or the batteries are dead. Which is totally possible because I don't know what condition these batteries are. They're just a couple batteries that have been sitting on my bench here and chances are they're probably dead. They're crappy pro cells. Point five. That battery looks okay. What this one? One point five. These cells look fine. So why doesn't it play? Perhaps it has a problem, and we'll have to uh, open it up and see why it's not working. This could be a project for today. It uh, the display comes on, and it reads the disc. ISO 9660 and of course now it's going to work hmm that's weird did not work the first time it tells me it's an mp3 disc and if I press the uh, the skip button it'll move to the next track and I believe I can go into play mode I can set this thing up for uh, random one uh, play mode one intro random and directory and directory program and program so it's got different modes that it can operate so if i put it into random and hit the skip button it'll find a random track As you can see it's not the quickest at starting up because it has to search out the track but it's kind of a neat little it's kind of a neat little toy let's um, get a look inside this thing so first we'll remove the batteries got a record feature on it too which I don't really know what that does um, I don't think it, I don't think it actually records onto um, CDs it's not a rec CD recorder I don't know what the record feature does does it record into memory and is it only like a few seconds of recording that you can record I don't know I've never tried that but um, okay, I think I got all the screws out of this thing now it should it should lift the part, pop apart here somehow. I'm not missing any screws am I? I think I got them all. There we go. Top lifts off. Okay, there it reveals the workings of this unit. It is a, oh, it's a KSM 9000, a 900 AAA. It almost looks like a Sony pickup. It's Sony. 
It is made by Sony. Look at this. Cool. This is made by Sony. It says so right on the board here. You can read the word Sony on the circuit board. If I can get the uh, pickup out of the way without damaging it, it's taped down. I don't want to damage this ribbon cable. But This uh, says Sony right on the board right there. It says it's a 02C Sony from 2000. That's when this thing was made. And I've had this thing probably 20 years, so it, it must have been new when I got it, or relatively new, but this is from 2000 that this uh, unit came out, and uh, it looks to be made by Sony. I say this looks like a Sony pickup. KSM is the number on it. And with that wording Sony on the board there, I would say that that pretty much confirms that this was made by Sony. It's using a Winbond chipset on air and a Samsung chip so Sony had a hand in this that's for sure I'm still curious what the the microphone socket is for I guess we'll we'll play with that see what that does uh, there's probably nothing on the bottom of the circuit board on this I'm thinking it's it's all one-sided everything's gonna be on the top we'll just confirm oh it's actually a double-sided board interesting so it's got chips on both sides and who made these chips Samsung. So it's it's full of Samsung chips. It's got a Philips chip over here. What is this one? Main main microcontroller. This one will be, but what is it? Can we see? I don't see any. I don't see any. Uh, what brand is this? Is it Samsung too? Get my light in here so I can see this a bit better. Yes, this is a Samsung chip as well. So, so it's got it's got three Samsung chips on the bottom side of the board. It's got a Samsung chip on the top side. It's got a couple Windbond uh, chips. These are like the type of chips you'd find in a sound card in a computer, right? I guess that's to do the MP3 decoding. And some memory, obviously. It's an interesting little unit. An interesting and an unusual little unit, I should say. Okay, how does this go back in? I gotta get these battery terminals where they belong. Otherwise, it's not gonna make a connection to the battery. No connection to the battery means it won't work. And then the little switches here have to be lined up. I'm just gonna put this thing back together and we'll, we'll, we're gonna test a few more things on it. I'm, I'm not gonna do a heck of a lot on this thing because it works. I was just kinda wanting to show you guys this thing as to what it is and it's unusual that the plastic it's actually white on this and it's been painted silver usually it's black plastic right this is this is white plastic and they've, they've spray painted it silver which again is something that is you know not too common in the industry So we're going to grab a microphone, plug a microphone into this thing and see what it does. I have a feeling it just records to internal RAM on it and uh, only makes a temporary recording. I don't know. As I say, it's, uh, this is something that is, this is new to me. I've never tried that feature. I, I bought this thing because it looked cool and it wasn't that expensive and I used it for a while to play mp3 cds i actually used it as a mp3 jukebox and just played music had it playing into my stereo system and i could put 
and make a compilation of like, 150 tracks or whatever and uh, let it play on this and I, I would have had the power adapter for it because I would not have been burning up batteries to do that but um, anyway let's plug a microphone in and see what this thing does well, I've got the worst microphone in the world it's a dynamic mic 500 ohm impedance I've got a box full of microphones and I, I grabbed the worst microphone that's ever been made okay we'll plug the microphone in I'm going to put this thing on recorder and uh, I guess this is the record button but what it does let's see here does it do anything does this thing record hello hello no desk okay no kidding uh, okay it looks like it's got eight minutes and 30 seconds to record and I just stopped maybe my batteries are weak oh these batteries are weak it's already showing me the battery weak light okay if I press this eight minutes and 31 seconds to record as you can see it's counting down so it looks like the recordings are made directly to memory and not recorded at all and the battery just went dead again now these batteries are weak I wonder if it's still going to save anything here hmm I may have to get some new batteries. I'm going to go find some rechargeables that are charged up. Okay, i got nickel metal hydride batteries in it now. And I'm recording into the internal memory. And I don't even know how this thing works. But uh, it says I'm recording. So let's just see if I press the record button again. Does it stop? Or does it continue? Okay, now it's paused. If I want to play this back, do I just press play? Or how does this thing work? So that's uh, looks like oh, press, maybe press stop. Okay, now what happens if I press play? Okay, I've got nickel metal hydride batteries in it now, and I'm recording into the internal memory. Uh, I don't even know how this thing works, but uh, it says I'm recording. So let's just see if I press the record button again. Does it stop? Play. So I paused it, work. and then I continued when I pressed the so play button. It uh, continued recording. It's like, oh, press, maybe press stop. Yeah, so that's that's what that is. It records, it records eight and a half up to eight and a half minutes into memory on the unit itself. You know, so it's uh, yeah, interesting little device. Back to um, playing CDs. It'll play audio, regular audio CDs, and of course, it will play. Uh, mp3 so a regular audio CD will play just like any other disc I put this into player mode playing a CD, a regular CD. As you can see how fast the disc spins for a regular CD. And then if I go to a an MP3 disc, the disc will, I'm sure, spin a lot slower. I think what it does is it loads the entire track uh, into the memory buffer first, then it plays it off the memory. play because uh, this is not royalty free stuff but uh, it is it is relatively slow when you search tracks out because it has to buffer it I know that it does uh, it does have a pretty good buffer like you can shake this thing around when you're playing mp3 discs and it will not skip But there is a few second delay as it as it buffers. You can see if you I don't know if you can see the disc, but it's certainly spinning much slower than it was when it was playing an audio CD, which of course had to be read in real time.
this is skipping ahead. I've just hit the button a few times, so it's now picking a random track. It's really taking its time reading. It'll eventually get there. There you go. And if I... See, I can shake this thing and it won't... Uh, it won't skip. Because it's read... I think probably all the track has been read into memory. It, re it basically reads the entire... The disc continues to spin just so it doesn't have to start and stop the disc. But um, it's... It's shockproof, as you can see. I can turn the music up here. It will not skip. It won't skip it at all. It's uh, it was really well done. And I shake this thing like crazy, and it's still it's not skipping. You know, it does not skip. That was pretty good. That was uh, that was one of the neat things about this thing. It's uh, yeah, it uh, it actually does perform quite well and I, I remember when I got this thing I used to use it in my car and uh, I used to use it at home to listen to uh, discs that I had recorded in mp3 format I got this and then I got a I got an in dash player in my car that uh, would do mp3s and I used that I, I, my first one that I got was uh, I think it was a Kenwood it was one that had the the face that you just turn around so that it would look blank. Kenwood had a car CD player that you you press you just pressed it on the face and the face would turn around and you snapped it back in and it made it look like it was just a blank plate. It was a it was a hide in plain sight type. You could turn it around and you open, it, it had all the controls on the front. I still got the unit. It just it doesn't stay closed anymore. It stays open, which is kind of dumb. The clip broke on it. Um, that was the that was the first uh, MP3. CD player that I had in my old car, and uh, then I replaced that with an MP3 or uh, with a mini disc with a CD changer in the trunk. I still got that in my still got that in my old my old collector car that's it's in storage until I get around to restoring it someday. Um, it's 25 years old, so it's a car that I could work on any time and get it on the road with cheap insurance with collector plates because it's it's now 25 years old. And still runs, and it's a rare car. It's relatively rare. It's a, uh, a '95 uh, Thunderbird Super Coupe. They only made like 575 of this particular of this model, um, which was made at the Lorraine uh, uh, factory in Iowa before they before they discontinued that model. They discontinued it in '95, and I have a '95. So the last year that it was made, and they only as I said, they only made I think 575 cars of the Super Coupe. Um, uh, model with the supercharger and 115 of those were with a manual transmission and the rest of them were with an automatic and I got the wrong type of transmission because the five speed would be even more rare with only 115 of them made anyway I, I pulled the original cassette deck out which I still have because I'm gonna have to put that back in when I if I ever get around to getting the car on the road and uh, I used to use this in it for a while with a I just carry this inside the in the glove box and uh, I had a cassette adapter that went into my cassette player, and that's what I did for a while. Um, and then I uh, pulled it and I replaced it. Actually, yeah, I replaced that with uh, the Kenwood, and then uh, then I put a mini disc in it. Anyway, that's um, that's a look at this little Encino portable MP3 slash CD player. This was. I think the first of the CD players that supported MP3 that was certainly that was portable. Um, there were other ones. There was a DVD player that was put out by uh, I'm trying to remember the name Apex Apex CD player that would support MP3s. I've got another little uh, little home player that plays MP3 CDs kicking around here somewhere, and uh, I have a uh, Sony. Uh, boombox that has a CD player that plays mp3s 
as well. Um, these were kind of at the end of the CD's run, right? Uh, 2000 or so is when they came out, most of these ones. And uh, see, so that was like kind of like the last kick at the can for uh, MP3 CDs. My, my other car, my, my 12 volt, the one that my channel is named after because my, for those that don't know about my channel name, 12 volt vids, uh, I have a 2012 Chevy Volt and the first videos that I did on my YouTube channel, I have another YouTube channel as well, but it doesn't have any content because it, the, the, the channel never really took off and never really went anywhere. So I've, uh, I haven't got any content on it, but um, I came up with the, the, the uh, channel name 12 volt vids because my my original Chevy Volt, 2012 Volt, I was doing videos on the Volt. So um, that's where the channel name came from, was because it was that was what the videos were on. Now it has in the dash a CD player, single disc CD player that plays MP3s as well. And that's something I really miss on my 19 Volt because it doesn't have a CD player anymore. I have to put everything on a USB stick or an SD card, which is great. You can carry a lot of stuff around with you, but sometimes you got a CD and you want to listen to it. You just want to take it in the car and plug it in and listen to it. And you can't do that anymore on new cars because they don't put CD players in them anymore. Anyway, hey, I could use this. I could use this. My car has an auxiliary input. I could use this in my car. I just may have to do that. This thing could go back into service because I do have an aux plug, and I even I think I even have an aux cord that's got a three and a half millimeter plug on each end that I could just take this and throw it in the car if I want to listen to a CD, and I just may end up doing that. Thanks for watching.